Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 117 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I have a bunch of random ores. So as you can see, uh, my laser drill that we built last episode is just getting a whole bunch of random ores for me. Everything from Firestone ore, to Cobalt, to Saltpeter, to Nether Quartz, to Coal. I mean, you name it, if it's an ore type, it should be created by this laser drill uh, as it jumps into the void. So, uh, you know, I'm thinking here, let's take a look and see what we can do with this stuff. Uh, there's a couple things we can work on. One other thing I want to mention, though, is that this system down here is working beautifully. As you can see, we're uh, just running a little bit low on power here, and as that power drops down just a little bit and it cuts off that last bit of power there, I think we got here just in time to see this, too. Uh, this thing might be emptied, and this thing's almost empty. We should see the whole system trigger. Oh, there we go. I'm taking damage, and the timer's going, and yeah, look at that. Ouch. So we just kicked up everything that we need to do to get all kinds of cool power going. Look at that. Nice. I like it. So uh, the nether star generator is running uh, as a result of us having this whole system here. So that test is completed. We know that that's working correctly. I'm pretty proud of it, by the way. It's ran about a dozen times now. Also, as a result of it stealing another star, this timer should be running. So exactly one minute from the point at which another star goes into the nether star generator down there, uh, we should have a wither spawning and getting us another nether star. So remember, that generator runs for two minutes. This thing runs every one minute, so we'll never run out of nether stars. Assuming we don't run out of soul sand and wither skeleton skulls. Like we have a wither skeleton skull uh, generator. We can always just flip that on. As for soul sand, I don't think there's a terribly easy way to get it. There's a few ways that you can. Let's see. So this guy should get kicked into gear in just a second. There he is. Hello, Wither. How are you? Nice to see you. Um, yeah, there's really no easy way to generate soul sand. I don't think. I've actually not even looked into it. I just figured I could just run in and get it. Uh, we can get soulful wax from bees, if we were really that worried about it. Heat sand and tainted soil from Natura. Uh, rock pressure, that's not going to do anything good for us. Yeah. So, I mean, short of a, a bee system, you know, spirit bees or some other kind of bee, what's the best one for it? I mean, maybe I'll work towards it. Soul. Ooh, 30% soul comb from a white bee. That's scary looking. Uh, you also get arcane compounds from that. Neat. Um, all right, so yeah, I'm not going to worry too much about getting the soul bees. I'm sure they're a long, painful process to breed up to, and I'm pretty much happy with my bee situation right now. So look, the wither's dead, and we have another nether star in the system. This thing is fully automated and working perfectly. All right, so now that uh, this is all up and running, Ooh, I got topaz ore. Man, we got a lot of crazy ores from this thing. Let's take a look at uh, the laser foci. So we can see here that we can change the focus of this laser and make it more likely to get a certain type of ore. Why don't I go figure out which laser focus I want? So as you can see, there are several uh, laser foci here. These all go into that focus, and each of them will get you different things. So for example, uh, the white one should wind up getting you things like saltpeter, aluminum, nether quartz, iridium, anything that's like whitish in color. Orange will get you more ardite and copper, because those are kind of orangish colors. Uh, let's see, magenta actually doesn't have anything associated with it. Uh, blue will get you more, or light blue will get you more diamond ore. There's a long list on the uh, FTB wiki. What I'm looking for, though, in particular, particular is probably I want to say Certus Quartz. That's what I'd like to get a lot of. So we're going to want Cyan. Cyan's going to get us Certus Quartz or that's going to be the one that I want to focus on for now and we can always of course change this later. So this is going to require a few emeralds, a few diamond nuggets, and some stained glass panes which aren't too hard to make. You just need some stained glass uh, and then you get some uh, ceramic dye. So I'm going to have to get a few of these. Uh, let's get some ceramic dye, by the way. It's clay plus cyan dye equals four ceramic dye. So how am I for clay? That doesn't look too bad. I have plenty of that. Cyan dye. I've got a little bit, but I could do with a little bit more. That might be enough. Cool. Uh, so let's get some clay. You know what? I'm going to get cyan. Should be in here. That should be good. And then glass should let me use any glass I want. Nice. And if we come over here, we'll note that there are one, two, three, four, five, six of these that we need. Cool. Uh, so let's go ahead and get some of that. 
and then I can get a cyan laser focus. Cyan, cool. One, two, oh right, there, one at a time. Three, oh, I need more gold nuggets. Actually a little bit low on gold, my goodness. One, two, three, beautiful. Well, maybe I'll switch this thing on and tell it to start getting me more gold. Or I could, of course, just always flip on my mining machine, too. That's always an option. Cool. So now that we've got all the laser foci in here, it's not guaranteed to get me Certus Quartor. It's just going to have a stronger chance at getting me Certus Quartor. So if we keep an eye on this thing, see, we still got a piece of coal just now, uh, but it's a much higher chance to get me uh, Certus Quartz. And I think the other thing we might get from this is Malachite, which I don't know if I have any of just yet. Oh, we do. So Malachite. So these are the two things that we should have much more of, um, you know, in a little bit here. So we should see a lot more Malachite and a lot more Certus Quartz Ore. Again, not guaranteed to get those, but a higher chance of getting them. And because we filled all six, it should be a much higher chance. I don't know what the percentage is. Um, it's still random. It's just, you know, like I said, an increased chance. It, it, it doesn't really say anywhere what the percent chance increase is, but we just got some Malachite, as you can see. So at least, you know, that's something. Uh, and that time we got Ruby. So, a little bit random still, but it should, in the end, wind up getting us lots of Certus Quartz. We're going to come back later on in the episode and kind of check on this and see if we're right and get a lot of Certus Quartz. Also, now that I walk into my room here, I should mention to you guys that I had to get rid of the sky ceiling. Um, unfortunately, the sky ceiling thing was causing a lot of frame rate lag for me. And I've got a pretty powerful computer, and it was pretty painful. Painful. Anytime I would be outside of this room, I'd have perfectly good frame rate here, and then when I just kind of put this in my view, my frame rate would drop significantly, and I didn't want to give you guys, um, you know, that same problem. So I had to get rid of the sky ceiling. It was a cool idea, and a couple sky blocks is probably okay, but having as many as I did was just a little bit rough on the frame rate. So I had to get rid of that. I will uh, paint, you know, fill the ceiling in with some more bricks and paint them black so that we get the, the look back, but I just haven't had a chance to do that yet. All right, so now on to what we're gonna work on. All right, guys, we're back. A short period of time has passed between the last segment, and you can see we've already gotten a little more than 20 Certus Quartz ore and some Malachite ore as well. So as you can see, we're definitely getting a lot of the Certus Quartz ore that we need. And of course, the weather thing is still happening. Now what I'd like to do is build a remote base. So I'm a little nervous about this whole Enderman interaction we had going on here. Obviously, the end is flooded. Uh, the Endermen have been... Well, I'm not going to say they're totally taken care of, though. Like, it's pretty well flooded, but I, I'm not perfectly comfortable with the position that I'm in with regards to the Enderman. So I'd like to start setting up some base defenses to try and help protect myself against the possible oncoming storm of the Enderman. So I think what I'm going to do is uh, build some base defenses for this base, but I'm also going to work on a remote base just in case we need to, uh, you know, escape here if they do something to this place. I want it to be uh, pretty much in a position that they won't be able to assault. So I'm thinking I need to get to a Mistcraft Age. That's right. I've got a pretty cool plan. Let me put together some cool stuff, and I'll be back once I have a full plan for what I want. All right, guys, I'm not sure how good of an age this is going to be, but it's worth giving it a shot. Uh, I'm going with an ocean oil field biome. I really wanted an ocean biome for this, but I don't have one of those pages. So um, let's go for that with a single biome. We're going to go uh, zenith, zero length sun, normal stars and moon, no weather, and uh, just a few modifiers to hopefully just make it so that it's not a big ordeal. Uh, let's go ahead and get the book binder going here, and we will try calling this safe haven let's see what kind of craziness we run into so i've got my descriptive book i've got a linking book to get me home let's get a book stand over here or two probably no sticks and i should do something just always have sticks in my ae system here there we go and let's give this place a look. I'm not sure what it's going to look like, but eh, worth a shot. Descriptive book. See you guys on the other side. Well, it definitely looks like it added the rainbow modifier. That's cool. It also looks like it added another sun in addition to the stable one that we've got there. And this is not 
well, I guess it's an ocean oil field biome. I don't know why this is very weird. Maybe we got the no seas modifier by mistake. Like it might've added that in by itself. Oh boy, that's another fortress modifier. Yeah, it added a lot of modifiers all by itself. Probably because my book was pretty boring. Um, and it looks like, wow, we've got some random crazy stuff going on here. All right, I'm gonna try that again. All right, so this is an interesting world. Uh, not, again, quite what I expected to get. Um, I am going to have to try again. I don't think the pure ocean oil field biome might be doing exactly what I want it to do. Uh, this is where I landed in here. I'm kind of curious as to what this liquid is. I think I have to get a bucket to figure that out, though. Um, let's head back. I'm just going to make sure this book falls right where I'm at. And then uh, I'm going to grab a bucket. I'm just curious. That looks like fuel to me, and that would be kind of funny. Um, let's see here. There we go. Safe haven. That was a second. Ah, come back here, book. Thank you. <laughs> that was close. Um, there you go. And a bucket. Ah, creosote. Okay. <laughs> That's creosote liquid. Okay, very cool. Very interesting. Not quite what I expected of an age. All right, I might need to do this. I'm gonna, instead of doing this in a separate age, I'm just gonna go ahead and find a nice big ocean in the overworld. I think that'll be a better bet. So we'll find the overworld. I think I have a nice place I might wanna go to. All right, this place doesn't look terrible. This is actually uh, kind of close to where my mining system used to be. Uh, you can see it having cleared out the area here. That's not a problem though. Um, I'm going to call this home to my new base. So it's really deep under the water. I should be safe from any Enderman intervention here. I think first though, I need to build an actual base down there and building underwater can be a hassle. So let's check out something that might be pretty cool for this purpose. So something you can do with the MFFS mod is add a module. I believe it's called the sponge module. I have to find it in here. It should be around here somewhere. Let's see, warn, block access. There's lots of different modules, as you can see. I thought it was called sponge. There it is, sponge module, sweet. So I just need uh, eight water buckets, huh? Not a problem. I'll make 10 of them, why not? So here we go, should be almost ready, nice. Buckets can go back in the system there. So I've got a sponge module. I've got a bunch of other cool modules and such. Let's go create a little force field area. I'll probably also, while I'm here, want a cube module. Cool, that should help out with things. And I'm also gonna want some redstone or red alloy wire. Yeah, red, redstone conduits. And I think I'm also going to rehook up my quantum uh, link chamber here. And I'm gonna need my singularities. I'm not sure what happened to the linked singularities I had before, but let me just get some TNT real quick. And a lever. Where can I do this that it won't be too big of a problem? Where can I set off some TNT in my base? Good question. I know where. <laughs> Probably help if I dropped just in time. Oh, did it miss it? Darn. All right, let me get this thing taken care of. Oh, you know what? I need to drop that ender pearl dust stuff, don't I? All right, let's do that again. You, you, and... There we go, nice. So now that we've got our quantum entangled singularities, let's real quick hook up our quantum field ring. I think I'll do that right downstairs uh, near some power storage stuff. Hmm. Might not be a terrible idea to maybe do it right here. There we go. Uh, so power in one side and hook up the AE cabling to another side because this way, uh, once this is set up, I'll have access to my AE system at my old, at my new little remote location base. And then I shouldn't have any worries about not having what I need. So let's see, we'll probably just wanna tap in on either side here. And then redstone. 
You guys are up next. Maybe I should have done this the other way. There we go. That'll give this thing power. You can see it's lit up. Now connect it to the data line. And this thing should be ready to transmit. Okay. Cool. All right. So hopefully I got this right. The last thing I'm going to need is something that I requested this guy to start making for me, and that's a Tesseract. We're going to need that on the other side as well. Uh, I will eventually get a link book that'll get me directly there, but let's first go set up where we're going to have this neat underwater base area. And you can hear the wither getting spawned somewhat regularly. <laughs> How cool is that? I mean, I'm just laughing a bit about the fact that the nether gets spawned every so often to fuel my stuff. Alright, so out here, let's find a nice place to call home to an underwater base. I'm thinking this looks like a good spot as any. Dun 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 dun. So we're going to want to make sure that we get down there pretty quickly. I might have wanted to bring a scuba helmet with me. Did I ever install the thing that makes it so that I can breathe underwater? We're going to find out. Yes, I did. Okay, cool. Well, that's good at least. So here we are, we're almost to our underwater base. Let's get set up with our force field stuff. So I apologize, it's a little dark underwater. I don't know how good this is gonna look on YouTube, but uh, standard array of uh, Fortron capacitor, coercion deriver, and uh, force field doohickey. Oh, there's another weather. <laughs> uh, let's hook up our Tesseract. We'll just put it here for now. And we'll pull this into high power. And we're going to make sure that we're receiving energy. And, oh, I should have brought some kind of, no, sorry, right, I can just, there we go, cool. And you can go on, you're going to transmit power to this dude. But I want to make sure that you do it quickly, so some speed modules are probably in order. That shouldn't be a problem for you. Cool. So you're flipping power over to here. We can put our cube mode on. And uh, we're going to want to probably just do scale. So I'm going to scale down like just two, but I'm going to scale up like five or six. And for now, let's do like eight in all directions. Does that sound all right? Let's do seven in all directions. That sounds like a good number just to get started, right? That should be cool. So if we flip this dude on, we should have some force fields getting created here in a general gist of an area. All right, we'll turn you off for a minute. Let's do the sponge module. You ready? Go. Nice. Look at that. That is cool. I like it. So that's enough for now. We can always flip on more in a bit. But as you can see, uh, it just removes all the water. Now the cool thing about this is when you turn this off, the water will flood right back in and resume to its original position because it'll just turn into flowing blocks, which will then switch into full blocks. Cool, right? So uh, let's go ahead and scale this out just a little bit more. I'm going to do like that and flip it on. Ta-da! That looks good, right? Uh, now, for the quantum bridge, we're going to want to build this real quick. Oh, I didn't put my singularity in. Oh, what a dire noob. I'm going to have to go back to my base. I had planned to be able to uh, just get this in here, but I forgot to install the quantum singularity. Oh, well. Um, we're definitely going to want to grab this thing. We're also going to have to make... Uh, I almost forgot to. We're going to have to make something else. So why don't I head back to my main base and get a couple more things that I'm going to obviously need, and then we'll be back. So you, I'm just going to cut the power to you for a minute. Yeah, I'll leave it on. I'm not really that worried about power wastage. All right, back in a few minutes. All right, guys, we're back. I installed the um, quantum chamber thingy, and I've got myself uh, an ME crafting terminal, which I forgot to grab as well. So now I should be able to come down here, flip this dude on, and ta-da! Cool. All right, now all I should really have to do is stick this terminal right here, and he should light up and be able to access, nice, my entire AE system. How's it going? Uh, glowstone, how about some of this? That sounds like a plan. And let's get ourselves, I don't know if it's in here. Ah, there it is. Here's a neat trick for you guys if you're really looking to 
create a lot of little light sources that aren't in the way and also won't be affected by the flow of water. I can't put torches down because as soon as I put torches down, uh, they'll have a problem, right? But if I want some light sources down here, boom, look at that. Haha, <laughs> glowstone nooks. They emit the same level of light as a glowstone does, uh, but they're a multi-part and they're really small and they're really not obtrusive in any way. They're super tiny and I love it. Uh, and then, like I said, they won't get washed away by water. Haha, <laughs> when it floods in, that's cool. Of course, they will, you know, prevent water from overlapping themselves because they are taking up a block slot, but no biggie. Lights and power back on. Beautiful. Haha, <laughs> that's cool. All right, so let's build a nice little underwater area here to call home. I also brought with me just a few more scale modules. I wouldn't mind bumping this out a little bit more. You can see as it, you know, has to readjust the force field, it'll let water in for a second, but then it comes back. Nice. All right, let's get some bricks and start tidying this place up. And you know me, I'm the king of building with bricks. But, eh, what are you going to do? Stone brick slab? I don't know how that's even possible that that's in my inventory. Ah. Stone bricks. Okay, cool. All right, wand of equal trade. And I'll be back in a minute. Guys, I figured it's about time that I make one of these mysterious magnets just because... Can I do this with quartz or blocks? Yes, cool. And then I just need a compass or two. One, two, and then I should be able to make a magnet level zero. Sweet. I swore I made one at one point, but I just don't remember what happened to it. Come here, everything. If I taught that to my AE system, I could really make a really good powerful magnet, but I'm being a little lazy. All right, tidying up. So by the way, it looks like I accidentally stumbled across some abysmal stone. Uh, this stuff's really cool. It leads into a geode, if I can find my way into it. There we go. Hello, geode. Nice. Uh, there's a good amount of stuff in here, so keep that in mind. It's pretty nice to check out. Usually there's some good loots inside and lots and lots of stuff. This one looks kind of small, actually. This might be a smaller geode, but it works. Oh, by the way, if you get trapped outside your force field, like, whoops, I just did, make sure to grab yourself a biometric identifier and an identification card and plug that down. You should be able to pop it down outside the force field. That's what I did and was able to get myself back in. And then I grabbed it and brought it inside the field. Just did that all off camera real quick. All right, so we've got a basic setup here. That's doing a good job of keeping this thing well protected. Let's build ourselves a little safe base. So at this point, we've got what's essentially two different options on how we can, you know, build up this base. The personal one that I like most is grabbing some more of these Focus May Try and getting a Camouflage Module. This is pretty cool. Check this out. Throw the Camouflage Module in here and boom. What are we going to have? Nothing. Well, nothing really. Um, but if we go ahead and toss, let's see. Do we have any stone bricks? We should. While I'm at it, let's ask for a thousand more. Begin your crafting. I like that I can totally access everything. I think if I just put that in there, oh, ho, ho, look at that. Uh, so the camouflage module will uh, replace everything with camouflage. Cool, right? Uh, let me just get a few more bricks here. So what I'm thinking is we can trick the Enderman into thinking that, hey, yeah, Direwolf's just hanging out in a regular old block room and all that boring stuff that he always does, right? Um, no, not so much. Actually, in reality, uh, Direwolf is hanging out in a force fielded room. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun. Dun, dun. Put this guy here, just a couple more bricks. So the Enderman will think, yeah, we can get in there, we can harass Direwolf, when in reality, if any Enderman happen to wander into this base, ho ho, they are in for a rude awakening. Boom. And it floods them. How cool is that? good plan right so that's part of the plan there's a few other things I'm going to want to make here uh, looks like I trapped myself outside again let's get inside dun 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 you should be able to uh, like I mentioned before hold shift to walk through the force field and you'll be all right do 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 nice <laughs> that's cool right so a couple things I might want to do I'm not sure if I just want to have one big room here 
Or if, uh, you know, what I'm thinking might be cool is like have a big room but have actual bricks to make up different sections of the room. Obviously this is just, you know, a temporary structure. Uh, I'm gonna have a couple different, you know, rooms here segmented out, just kind of a plan for what I wanna do to keep these Endermen off my tail. So nice underwater base, Endermen are unsuspecting, and I also wanna have a master control panel. I'm not sure exactly how that's gonna work, um, but what I'm thinking, I have a couple ideas, but I'm not 100% sure on how I want to do it. But long story short, what we're going to have to do... Oh, that's cool. You can actually see through the force field because of uh, rendering. <laughs> Neat. Uh, what I'm going to have to do is come up with something that will be able to toggle on and off, but also won't be affected by any water flooding onto it. So might be a little bit of trickery involved there to figure out how I can do that. So one thing we should definitely be able to do is relocate some of these things right now. I should be able to grab all of it basically, except for this thing. I might put this either into the ground or underneath the ground. Um, that shouldn't be too hard to do. But we'll have this guy here, coercion driver, just start running please. This guy, oh boy, we already lost power on that thing. I did not think we would drain power that quickly. All right, thought we had a little bit more reserved in there. This thing must be really destroying our energy reserves. <laughs> That's okay, we've got plenty, right? Uh, we'll throw half a stack of you into there again, and you should start powering that dude up, and then boom, we're good to go again. Nice. Um, and then we can have our biometric identifier here, master switch. That's just me. Um, not sure how that'll work with you guys when you download the world. You might have to go into creative mode or something, break your way in here, and then replace the identification card with your own. We'll see. All right, so that looks like not a terrible world. Let's see. One more thing I might want to do, move this underground. Um, it's going to be a hassle, but I think it's going to be worth it. Let me do that real quick off camera. All right, so here's what I got. We're going to put all this back the way it was um, with a stone brick in there and then scale modules. I had eight. I want to bump this up to 10 now because it's 10 blocks deeper than it was. 10. And I'll just do down one instead of two. And move that guy there, and then boom, how's this look? Nice. See how it's nice and under the ground now? You don't even see it. And I might have one more trick up my sleeve to check out. Okay, I must have moved it in some way because these things are inside the wall now. Not that that's a big problem. I could always scale it out a little bit. Should probably have something here to indicate. I know what I'll do. I'll get like some colored bricks, like light blue. That might be cool. And then we'll know exactly where the force manipulator is at all times, right? So I want this guy to be in compass mode. And this is north. So if I bump the scale out one on north, then we should be that much cooler. All right, not terrible. All right, maybe not. Okay, I must have done something funny. It's good now. Okay. Anyway, uh, one more idea I have. All right, I think I need to do a little bit of work in order to get this to work, but what I'd like to use is a pneumatic craft universal sensor, which can detect when players are nearby. There might be another way to detect nearby players as well. I'm going to look into it and see what I can come up with, but I'd like it so that this entire room shuts down in the event that I'm not here. So when Direwolf's not here, um, the, the force field collapses, the... Um, quantum link chamber shuts down, everything goes basically offline. And uh, it basically cuts the power to all the things in here. And then once a player gets nearby, and I'm gonna use Direwolf 20 as the player name for it, boom, everything lights up. But I think that's gonna require a little bit of work and we don't really have the time for it this episode. What I think I should do is grab a link book. So let me do that. Do I have any link books in here? I do, to the end, to the overworld, to age 11. Uh, this might be what I want. I hope, um, and a book stand. This will at least get me home, and then I'll just come back in a little bit and um, probably wind up there and there, and let's go. Hopefully that takes me to my base. Can't imagine where else it's going to take me. Hooray! Um, and since I promised at the end of the episode that I'd look into this, how much... Oh, wow, yeah, we have a lot of Sirtis Quartz. 
nice. We have a lot of a lot of things, but we definitely have a lot of Surtis Quartz. How's everything going here? Uh, still working, doing its power thing. How's our Nether Star generator going? Hopefully everything is running fine there. Oh, we're short on Nether Stars. What did we run out of? Soul Sand? We did. We ran out of Soul Sand. All right. So I should probably cut the power to these things real quick. So let's get some levers. I think I can apply the power to this. There we go, and that will stop the work on the laser drill. It's no longer getting power to be able to run. I kind of felt like we hadn't seen any withers recently, so I wasn't terribly surprised to find out that we're out of soul sand. Oh, looks like this thing's actually running at the moment. Refilling the energy cells. Well done. Uh, I will go to the uh, nether, grab some more soul sand. Where is my wand of equal trade? Nice. And then uh, we'll be back next episode to work a little bit more on our remote base. I just want to make it just at least a nice-ish place. Uh, it doesn't have to be super fancy. It's just going to be a nice remote location in the event that we run into trouble as a result of the Enderman. For now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. We will be back next time uh, to do some more crazy stuff. Hopefully protect ourselves against a possible Enderman attack. All right, guys. Take it easy.